Hello everybody and welcome to one more video on big units. In fact, this is there's only one big unit here, which is the, the, the Zulu army that you see here, all along this curve, uh, and a, a medium-sized army, if I can call it, which is the, the British army that is defending, as probably you have noticed from the from the from the hill, that is defending the Isandlwana camp. This is the 22nd of January, 1879, and of course it's the, the Battle of Isandlwana, the battle that one of the actions that opened the, the, the Zulu campaign of Chelmsford against uh, against uh, Setsuwayo, the Zulu king. Um, so uh, th this, this event is one of the most famous of the colonial history, exactly because the British were heavily defeated. There were around 1,800 men on the British side, to, both British, uh, some volunteers and also some 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 uh, African auxiliaries, and uh, of them around 1,500 were, were killed. The, the Zulus were 17,500 approximately. I mean, at the beginning you see numbers like uh, like uh, 20,000. A few years later, the number most uh, most common number was was 19,000. Now I think uh, people are settling on the 17,500. Uh, so, which is represents more or less half of the of the entire Zulu army. So, half of the entire Zulu army was present here at this very very famous battle. Um, so, a, a little bit about miniatures. Most most of this is, of course, as you as you probably recognize if you are a, a plastic fan, uh, is Eshi. Uh, in the late eighties, maybe not sure, uh, Eshi released the. Um, uh, the, the their Zulu and uh, British uh, colonial uh, soldiers uh, figures, and of course, it, it, from then on, you were finally able to portray these kind of actions. This one and, and Rock's Drift and, and Lundi and many others of this very famous war, and at the same time, do plenty of other African and and, and, and Middle East and and Central Asian uh, actions with with at least with with the British with this kind of very famous British. Uh, British helmet, with all these guys using the Martini Henry, which was the Martini Henry rifle, which was the, the common weapon of the British infantry on these days. Uh, so you 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 have you have here um, around five hundred twenty five um, Zulu figures. In fact, it should be a little bit more to represent the the full uh, Zulu army at Isandlwana. Uh, it should be some 800 figures, a little bit more than 800, but I, I still skip three of the of the regiments. I, I can show you here what I've been doing is this this thing here. So I already have the Nokenke, the Ingoma Makosi, the Uve, Umsijo, we should say Umijo, which is very complicated to say in, in Zulu and in, in Chosa language, um, with those clicks they do in the tongue, which are very funny. Also the Zanko, and also the Umlanga. All of these are made, but still three are to be done. The Unbonambi, the Ududuru, and the Ukushane. Uh, um, hopefully, in the future, I'll, I'll try to, to, to have a go at them. Uh, some sources you, you can see here. First of all, before the sources, you see here, for instance, the different different um, arrangement of the Zulus according to different, um, different authors. For instance, in Wikipedia, which is, uh, their article is not bad, about this battle, uh, they place one one uh, way of portraying the Zulu army. This is the famous um, chest and horns um, uh, tactic, in which the, the chest would, would hold the majority of the enemy and the, the horns would envelop the enemies, both from right, right and left. So there is a, there are here around uh, 19,000 men, but for instance, if you go to, to Redcoat, for instance, to, to, to the to this very nice book by by um, by Christian Parkinson, you you and according to to the to uh, Keith Smith uh, order of battle that uh, that uh, Christian uses on his book, um, you see for instance seventeen thousand five hundred, which is one of the latest latest number, and probably the most accurate, and also a very different um, placing of the of the. Of the regiments, uh, the the which the Zulu called the Ibutu. Amabutu is a, is a, is is the plural for Ibutu, 
graduate. Um, so there are differences. Uh, you will find them probably in each in each uh, uh, source or, or reference that you that you find. Uh, a little bit about uh, where to find to find uh, uh, inspiration for painting all this stuff. For instance, this very old military modeling of General eighty two. Uh, you can find here. Uh, this is in, uh, yeah, here and uh, and also in, the, in some pages at the end. Here, the continuation. You can see this very fine article with some very beautiful um, painting schemes, and you can find references for all um, Zulu. Uh, Amabuto. Uh, and the color plates, as you can see, are absolutely, absolutely uh, amazing. You, of course, all this address, most of it is ceremonial. Um, that's why you order his, 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 his soldiers to, to, to take out the, um, all this uh, headdress. Uh, and the fact is that uh, the unmarried regiments uh, we're using the leopard um, skin, something like this only, and married regiments were using um, were using a roundel on the on the head uh, as statues of, of marital uh, marital service, if I can say so. Also, of course, the usual um, campaign and and men at arms uh, osprey books, uh, and also going to to the internet, you will find plenty plenty of information, and especially plenty plenty of, of guys that already made absolutely amazing dioramas and and war games uh, regarding this this action. Now a little bit more on the figures, so you can see, you can see, uh, you can see for instance here, you can see my typical approach to this to this uh, to these figures. You can see here plenty of bent arms. If you recognize the figures, you will see plenty of bent arms um, in order to put the shields more to the front. Uh, this is an unmarried regiment. This is the, the Umlanga. Um, so leopard skin on their heads and shaven heads. All those feathers and things were taken out. Uh, Eshi has the problem of having too many, too many feathered heads. But it's not a problem. It's, in fact, it's a possibility. But in war, they were taken out. Uh, they were left behind. Sorry. Uh, so this is everything is based for the for the Age of Empires version two. So twelve uh, figures to to each of the large bases, and you can see here. For instance, you can see here a full, a full Ibuto. So one, two, three, four large bases, and then the smaller bases one and two of the skirmishers, which can be a couple to make a. a Big, a big base, and and the, the skirmishers armed with, with with some old rifles or even some captured Martini Henrys, and even some old muskets. Uh, so you have here the the, the Humlanga, you have here the one of the married regiments. Let me check the Izanku. You have here the uh, Umsijo. Exactly the Umijo, which is very difficult to say, as I told you before. It was one of the units that brought the the. the that bear the, the brunt of the of the fighting. Then you have here the, the Uve the regiment, and here the the Nokenke a regiment, and here the biggest of them all, the Ingonakosi, which is a giant regiment. Um, uh, most of them, as I told you, are Eshi, but there are some also some some um, uh, occult arms figures in the middle let me see where they are at least a box of them is here you can see some of them over there as you see okay if you recognize the figures probably you will also recognize the, the lovely equal to arms if i could i i would have used only equal to arms but the problem of the of my fever for these things is that i piled up some 12 boxes of of um of zulus and so i had to somehow to use them 
it was impossible to left them behind and then replace them by whether the the occult realms which are far better or even the more modern uh, um, hat industries zulus they have hat industries as have both unmarried and married uh, regiments in different boxes which is nice and of course they also have a wide range of of colonial troops of british um, uh, natal uh, um, mounted cavalry uh, natal uh, foot soldiers and things like that uh, artillery gardner guns uh, lancers whatever for all these uh, actions of this of this particular war which can be also adapted to a few others of the period so uh, regarding the, the zulus everything is is shown typical organization of the of the Zulu regiment there's always a stand of of command okay there are also some some casualty markers uh, casualty markers are made of of those kind of Zulus that break their legs while taking them out of the spruce because some of these miniatures are very old and they tend to break so you need to be careful placing them um, you need to to use a good varnish in the end you need to place the more fragile figures in the middle uh, for not for them not to get broken you need to replace many of the of the of the um, of the spears and, and the assay guys with 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 the plastic broom uh, ones which is much more durable it, it's it's at least what i did you can see plenty of them here for instance um and this makes them a little bit more durable uh, but after varnishing with with a good varnish they become quite uh, quite uh, handled uh, figures uh, yeah, uh, I, I think regarding Zulus is everything more or less to be said. Uh, their tactics were, uh, tactics were also not only based on this horn and chest, but also based on a lot of courage. And they knew that they were facing a, a superior firepower. So the idea was always to try to get as close as possible, as quickly as possible to, to the enemy. And then um, being superior as they were in, in close combat, they would put aside their, 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 their enemies with shield and then they would throw both the knobbery at the head of the adversary or with the assegai they would they would plunge it to the side of the of the enemy a little bit gruesome uh, story that i'm telling you i'm sorry you can see here uh campande the, the commander of the of the zulus for this battle one of the one of the great tactical uh, geniuses of, of 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 the zulus not easy to 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 do what he did even if with superior numbers because in fact theoretically the british should have a, a enormous advantage because they had incredible superior firepower the problem of of the of the british was of course their tactics that they used here they didn't withdraw to the to the to the uh, near to the mountain where the ground would be more favorable to defense they didn't form a lager with 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 uh, with carts and wagons and things like that like as the Boer would do and then also apparently other problems that were discovered more recently there would have been too much smoke on the on the battlefield because martini henry was quite a, a smoky gun together with two artillery pieces of seven pounder um and uh, also this moment of of the battle in particular that you can see here uh, represents the more or less uh, close to lunchtime one one o'clock more or less in in the afternoon which was the time of the solar eclipse which allowed in fact the zulus to come closer to the to the to the british almost unnoticed because it was too dark for them to be seen um so this this all this uh, um, all this uh, this uh, questions uh, put together and added up one upon the other uh, probably caused the, the british defeat also they they started to form too far from the camp which forced them to to spread too much, not forming a continuous line of, of defense. A little bit the, the the opposite of what happened at Rock's Rift. On the same day, uh, the 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 core that the Zulu core that and the, that uh, went to Rock's Rift couldn't defeat the British because they were in fact entrenched behind behind the fortifications. We can call it if it was a mission, uh, Rock's Rift. But if, even so, uh, it was quite difficult to 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 handle because of the of the protection that the British entitled themselves. Not here. Here it was exactly the opposite. We should blame Chelmsford because he was micromanaging all the campaign and he didn't do any, didn't give any orders to Poulain, to, to the commander of the camp, to do it. Um, Poulain was a little bit caught also off guard with the approach, with the fast approach of the of the of the um, of the Zulu, and and all this ended up in a terrible defeat. Now let's see a little bit the British. I mean the British you see here, for instance, a typical 
typical company. There were six of them of the 24th uh, Infantry Regiment. Uh, the flag should be probably it wasn't it was never uh, unfurled in the battle, so it's better to be inside a case. Six uh, regiments that you can see spread here all over. Uh, I placed some quartermasters because I think they are important figures. On the at least in the movie in, in Zuldon they are extremely important. A little bit exaggerated because apparently the ammunition was getting to the to the to, to the soldiers in relatively abundance. Problem was also the cartridges. Apparently the cartridge of the of the of the uh, Martini Henry uh, was not a very durable thing. It was a little bit almost handmade. It was a little bit strange, and and uh, these boxes filled with ammunition, even if they were getting to the to the to the soldiers, um, many of them bent while charging, also due to the accumulation of powder inside the, the barrel, things like that. And so many of the British must have had um, quite a few problems after discharging his his his, his rifle um, uh, several times. Another problem for, for the British. You can see here, then plenty of conversions I had to do. For instance, on those days that I built these things, let's try to focus. Whoops. Okay. This is a conversion of a, of a British six pounder into a mountain seven pounder. And the uh, figures are also, uh, I think, don't remember exactly, but probably conversions from the, from the, from the Eshi British box. Ads are for sure, but rest probably also something like that. Uh, also made um, something to pull the the the, the gun, of course. Um, uh, there are also three companies of uh, um, Natal of Natal infantry. Um, they have a few rifles. There was only one rifle a pair a pair each. Uh, Ten men, very very few. I, I placed a bit, f a few more here, and these are the only non Eshi figures, because for instance, the, the you may recognize this Eshi Confederate um, uh, officer. It's not an officer; it's, it's a guy with a rifle on on the on the Eshi Confederate box. But here it, it is a, a an officer with the, with. The, a white officer of this, of these uh, auxiliaries, and uh, oops, the other ones are Indians from Revel. They were all converted into into uh, Natal. They're called NCC, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Natal, Natal. What? Natal. No, I, I really can't remember. Sorry. And there is another company that I made more recently, and they are different. This uh, Natal. Uh, Infantry is made of Zulu. Some have jackets, others don't, uh, but they all have the characteristic uh, red band and all with shields, of course, and spears, much like the Zulu used. Uh, and some of them, of course, are having rifles taken directly from the Zulu. The officer is the same as, as the one before. Uh, now let's go to Dunford's, Dunford's group. Dunford is here on top of his, of his horse. Um, is the, that very famous Azegawa um, hard plastic figure that comes along with the, I think it is the M3, the honey, right? M3 light tank, yeah, Stuart. And uh, here you see some conversions of the, of the Eshi, uh, of some of the Eshi uh, Union uh, infantry converted with slouch hats into into natal uh, cavalry officers in their blue in their blue uh, uniforms and also you can see here the natal mounted police here with their striking uh, black uniforms these are the i think the yeah the the, the british holding the flag from from Eshi. And they were, their arms were twisted, and some 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 rifles were placed in their hands. The, the arms I twist them always with fire and with with fire of a lighter. And then I modeled a, 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 a rifle into their into their hands. And they became quite, I think, quite reasonable. Also, you can see here the Natal Carabiniers, which were also there were a hundred of of these two uh, groups of guys in with Dernford's uh, with Dernford's group. 
these are the natural carbineers and we're almost at an end uh, there are some some ox driven carts here from from the indians and and, and cowboys sets some b um, uh, bpm um, tents they are 3d printed and you have here of course the isandlwana mountain isandlwana mountain is a something i made just a few weeks ago um it is made in 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 in, uh, in blue foam uh and it gave me a lot of pleasure to, to do because i wanted to do it for many many years already so i placed some 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 steps as you can see so that i mean theoretically in in the game the british can come i mean up the the, the slope and defend itself a little bit like in rock's drift giving them a little bit more chance to 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 win even so it will be difficult of course um because in fact what would happen also in this uh, in this um this war game and with the zulu figures that are still uh, that are still uh, um, not present here they would go around uh, the the uh, Isandlwana and would cut uh, the british from escaping here in the in the fugitives path um some notes on on the terrain you can see here the the, the conical hill you can see here also a uh, a conversion for the for the rocket battery made it pieces of plastic and of course with the with the usage of of, of some 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 british um ashy figures there's also the the donkey that pulls that pulls the uh this contraption the the natal uh conscript here is a is a is also a rebel a rebel from the confederates um and this is about to be overrun of course this is the conical hill it will be overrun very quickly um this is represents one of the dongas from where um dunford defended the approach the retreat in fact to, to san luana some say that this was one of the causes of the of the defeat of the, of the british because it opened some gaps in the in the in the, in the formation i mean probably anyway they would be defeated but i mean there's always this game of cul of of of, of the, in order to find the culprit of course it's a, a human game a very famous one uh you can see here the talehane spur over there the neoni heights from where the british from where sorry the zulu army came and spread uh, all across more or less the plain in front of his Luana. and you have here the the setting one last word for the zulus and an important one because for from the portuguese perspective it is good to have this big zulu army of over 500 miniatures at least because this will allow you also to make the portuguese uh, campaigns of this period approximate of this period because the the, the portuguese will face also um the same problems of the british they were colonial powers of course they wanted to to to, to dominate and to <laughs> and if possible to to enslave the the, the african peoples of course and and uh, we had the same problems in mozambique and there was a tribe that of course made a big riot against the portuguese uh, obviously which were the vatuas and the vatuas were affiliated with the zulu so when i can make the battles of that uh, when i will make that the battle of that campaign of the portuguese 1895 campaign led by the famous uh, Mozinga Albuquerque, which will end in a very famous event of Shaimit, where the where the king of the of the of the Vatuas, of the Vatuas will be will be arrested, famous king uh, Gungunyana, um, and all the battles that precede that event. Um, I already made the Portuguese army, and these ones will give some very nice some very nice uh, uh, Vatua uh, Vatuas uh, figures. And this is it. I hope you have enjoyed, and uh, see you next in a in another in another uh, um, video for for an ad, or for a campaign or a or a big unit. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Bye bye.